in LNG in association with PowerPlay, presented by ExxonMobil. Don't be afraid to bring in people who know more than you. I think that is the key to success. Uh, don't let your ego get in the way of doing that. And, and don't be afraid to bring people on board that think differently from you. Uh, that is how you can grow your business. That's uh, how you can learn from one another. And, and if you only surround yourself with people who think like you, uh, you you're limiting uh, what you can accomplish. Hello and welcome to LNG TV and today's episode of Women in LNG. I'm Hannah Jackson and joining me is Adam Spry. Today we are delighted to be joined by Mona Satoda, President of CH4 International, an industry leader dedicated to supporting gas, LNG and power players who bring to life and optimise small to world scale projects globally across the value chain. Following a PhD in chemical engineering, Mona led several major LNG import, export and hub projects, quickly rising through the ranks and taking the helm of CH4 in April 2020. Mona, a very big welcome. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me this morning and thanks for the very kind introduction. Mona, your organisation has an impressive history working with LNG ventures across the globe, from world-scale import and export to small-scale LNG bunkering and downstream LNG. Uh, I understand you've got plans to increase services across LNG value chain, however, also to expand into renewables and hydrogen. It would be wonderful to understand more about your plans across LNG, but specifically why renewables and hydrogen markets are so integral long term. Certainly. Um, so we, we do absolutely intend to continue our services in the LNG. Uh, markets and, and in a you know more expanded manner than ever, um, we have provided engineering consulting services uh, all across the board, all the way through commissioning and operations of the facilities. Uh, and now, with the very strong presence of Clough as an EPC company in the United States, uh, we are we are you know more than excited to now be able to take our services all the way through an EPC offering to our clients, and and we have developed certain models to to help our clientele um, achieve their goals with their schedules and their you know some somehow aggressive targets. And we absolutely intend to remain uh, competitive and very active in that market. We do see LNG as the fuel, not just as an as a transition fuel. Uh, but as the one to, stand, to stay uh, long term. At the same time, we see a paradigm shift in, in the market. Now uh, the consumers are demanding how they want to receive LNG uh, and the providers and companies like ours, we, we respond. Um, you know, we see some of the majors looking at uh, not just LNG, uh, increasing their LNG portfolio uh, to fill some of the short term gaps in achieving some of the shorter term goals on uh, emissions and emission reductions, uh, but also looking at the renewables uh, to continue the trend working towards net zero. And um, as a part of that, we have launched our energy diversity group that focuses on those markets. And uh, down the line, I'll, I'll address some of the successes we have had in the field and, and how we continue to grow there. Uh, Mona, CH4 is often hired as owner's engineer, supporting across the end-to-end -end life cycle of a project. Now, this are, involves a high level of trust from your clients and likewise often finds you managing your clients, technical and EPC partners. So what's the secret to effectively managing these dynamics and relationships? So... First of all, we, we highly value the trust that our clients put in us. We don't take that lightly. We have worked very hard to earn it, very hard to maintain it. Um, and we can't thank them enough to allowing us to be part of their success and part of their projects. We, we believe in what they do. Um, and, you know, back to the environmental portion, a big part of what we do is to make sure that all these projects are done in an environmentally friendly manner. Uh, and per all the quotes, per all the regulations and, uh, you know, minimizing the environmental footprints. Um, and, and there is a lot of work that goes in there. There is a lot of parties that it takes for these projects to be able to have success in achieving their goals. Ultimately, it comes down to not just our technical expertise, but also to the culture and the mindset of our team. Um, we do think like an owner. We have... Uh, 
we have a mindset that the things like the owner, what is it that can help them? What is it that can help them uh, progress in a more effective manner? What it is that can help them achieve some of uh, the goals and overcoming the challenges that the project have? We talk about the mindset. Innovation is a big part of what we do, uh, working around the problems, offering solutions. And, and we don't see ourselves apart from our clients. We are, we're not particularly a contractor that comes in, gets the jobs done and walks out. Um, we build long-term relationships and we work very, very often as an extension of the owner's team. Uh, and when you have that mindset, when you work as one team, when you have the right people with with the similar approach, it actually becomes very easy to manage the interfaces. It becomes very easy to manage the dynamics. Not that it doesn't have its challenges, but uh, not, nothing, nothing major. We've been very, very fortunate to be able to offer that to the clients. And really, more than anything, we, we enjoy it. We, we very much enjoy being part of the success and um, work with our clients. As mentioned, Mona, you're, you're heavily involved in advancing small-scale LNG bunkering, barge, hub-and-smoke models. Um, very often, the focus of the industry is around larger-scale ventures. However, in order for the industry to grow, expand, have wider adoption as a fuel of choice in a lower-carbon world, whilst helping to unlock emerging markets that are smaller, it appears that such smaller-scale ventures are going to play a much more important role moving forward. Is that fair to say? And how would you see the market evolving over time on the smaller scale side of things? So I, I think that that's a fair statement. And we have seen a tremendous amount of activity in the smaller scale, uh, particularly within North America. Uh, globally, you still see uh, the ventures for base load LNG facilities, import and export. But in North America, uh, also in the Caribbean, when, when you look, we, we see a lot of activities there. And, um, you know, just an interesting fact, probably the oldest small scale LNG assets is our, you know, 150 plus peak shavers around, around the U.S. Uh, and the role that they play uh, in, in a sustainable uh, and efficient energy supply to our country. Um, we see a lot of the small scale scale projects coming up uh, for, for two reasons. One, to fill the smaller gaps in the power demand. And we also see them coming up as, you know, fueling the, uh, fueling the uh, fueling vessels, um, vehicular fuel, vessels, fuel, ships, and, and uh, even in, you know, industrial facilities, mining, trucks, and everywhere else. So, yes, there is a lot of activity there, and we are uh, very active in that market as well. Um, it is, again, LNG is a transition fuel, uh, but when you look at it globally, um, I think we can say with, with quite certainty, at least through 2050 and even beyond, uh, I think that it is going to be a major part of our energy infrastructure um, and, you know, supplying the energy where, where needed. We have the, a lot of the infrastructure in, play, in place. Um, and, and I don't think that it's going to be a smart or a feasible way to just walk away from it and, and entirely replacing it um, with other sources of energy. Uh, now, Mona, I want to ask, you shared a quote some time ago from Sir Frank Chapman, the former CEO of BG Group, who stated, we can't just assume the public is aware of the positive attributes of natural gas as a transition fuel. We can't expect them to get on board just because we within the industry know it. So, can the industry do more to effectively communicate the integral role gas and LNG must play in the energy uh, transition with governments, key stakeholders, and of course, the wider public? I am a huge advocate of education uh, and early education. We live, in a, we live in an environment where our younger generation in particular is bombarded with information. And I don't think that we as, you know, parents and teachers have done particularly a good job teaching them how to distinguish between facts and hype. Uh, and I don't think that we have done a good job building a curriculum for them within their schools, you know, start in middle school, high school, uh, tell them what the energy is, what it takes uh, for them to be able to, you know, get on the car and, and turn the engine and get to where they need to get. 
Um, also, when they start talking about, you know, wanting everything to be environmental friendly, we need to kind of start guiding them through thinking, uh, what is it that you're willing to give up, right? Um, it's not all on everybody else. And I think a lot of that education can happen early. A lot of that curriculum can be built, even in our college programs. Uh, there are a lot of joint effort that I see between the industry and the universities these days trying to build some real real life content in what they uh, are learning and what they're teaching. Uh, and I think we could certainly as an industry do a lot more to do that. Uh, usually we start all of this at, at the internship level, right? Just as the students are about to graduate. And I think that that's, uh, that's a bit late. Yes, yeah, so it's about getting that in there early and teaching young people about the future of it. Absolutely. So Mona, I'd like to move on uh, to speak a little bit about your own leadership journey, um, both in incredibly impressive and interesting. Um, you were born, you studied in Iran, moved over to Houston to undertake a PhD ahead of rising through the ranks. Um, what have been some of your major highlights and major learnings along the way thus far? The, the major highlights for me have always been around the people, uh, the valuable, positive connections that you make along the way. And it goes away, it goes all the way through, you know, your colleagues, your clients, but most importantly is, is the mentors uh, that would, that would kind of hold your hand, support you uh, and show you the way when you're just coming out of school. And, and I can't uh, overemphasize the value in that. The major learnings along the way for me have been uh, don't be afraid to bring in people who know more than you. I think that is the key to success. Uh, don't let your ego get in the way of doing that. And, and don't be afraid to bring people on board that think differently from you. Uh, that is how you can grow your business. That's uh, how you can learn from one another. And, and if you only surround yourself with people who think like you, uh, you're, you're limiting uh, what you can accomplish. Um, I, I would re-emphasize the value of, mem of mentorship um, and, and don't underestimate um, how, how far a good, strong relationship can take you in life. Um, those, are, those are some of my biggest learnings. You've, you've mentioned the value of mentorship, Mona, um, and I'm sure that's important in your organization, but what's the best advice you've ever received from a mentor yourself? Yeah, uh, I think it was on my, my day two and my boss said, um, just remember it doesn't pay to make enemies. <laughs> That's good advice. Yeah, <laughs> just a good advice. <laughs> that has been good advice, it's, uh, has, has proven very, very useful, so. Mm, effective. Um, now, Mona, last year at the height of the pandemic, you shared a video of Dr. Michael Ryan, Executive Director of the World Health Organization, who stated, if you have to be right before you move, you will never win. So how do you embed nimbleness, adaptability and speed to execute within your organization? And why is this so important moving forward? So the rest of that quote goes, be fast, have no regrets. You have to be first mover. Um, you know, it's obviously he was talking about the virus, but it's very much relatable to the market dynamics. We saw the very, very quick shift in, uh, you know, the renewables have always been a part of our, um, our energy conversations, but, but the very quick turn that, that hydrogen took, for example, and uh, the attention that it's been receiving in recent years, uh, as an industry, again, if you can't respond, I don't think that you can succeed. Uh, or I don't think that you can thrive, right? Um, and we take the same initiatives. Uh, there, there are two aspects from, from our side of the business. Um, we're used to working with dynamic projects anyways. Um, from the day that that developer has an idea in his mind until uh, the point where the first drop of LNG is made, that project takes so very many different shapes. So, you know, being nimble, being able to adapt uh, is, is nothing new to us. And then when you look at the market, uh, even on a larger uh, picture, uh, we were we were quite quick to develop our energy diversity group. Uh, we brought on people with expertise in that field. Um, we have managed to you know be sole source and and the preferred EPC contractor for some of the renewables, natural gas projects, uh, and and some hydrogen projects in brownfield facilities. Uh, and I don't think that you can do that if you're not willing to adapt and. 
you know, what the next five, 10 years might bring. Uh, I don't think anybody, any, any one of us has a, has a crystal ball to say, but uh, change is an inevitable part of life and an inevitable part of business. And uh, again, thinking about the teams that we've been working with along the way, the mindsets that we've been talking about, the culture, the innovation, um, and, and, you know, we, we always find a way to deliver. Um, that's what we take great pride in. Um, and being able to adjust is, is a huge part of that. So I want to just ask, there's a heightened focus on equality and the importance and value of diversity within organisations. So why is diversity so important? And, and how can organisations leverage diversity to unlock strategic and commercial advantage? So acceptance and inclusion is not just the right way of life. Uh, it has actually proven over and over statistically in, in business and how important of a role it plays in success of a business. Um, again, bringing people off different mindsets, off a diverse background, different thought processes, different uh, experience from their previous jobs or even the previous fields that they have worked in, uh, you, you cannot under, undervalue that by any means. Um, as part of that, um, I'm, I'm very proud to be the executive co-sponsor of our uh, women's group within CLOF, and we have grown it to be a diversity group. Um, we have, you know, folks of all sorts of backgrounds joining um, and working through the issues that we see within the industry. Oil and gas is still uh, within the oil and gas um, and engineering and construction. Women are still minority. Um, and we work very, very hard towards some of the key factors, right? Mentorship is one, empowerment is the other, uh, equality. Um, those, are the, those are the ones that we are working to, to address and, and improve. It's going to be a continuous improvement. It's, I don't think we'll ever make it perfect, but it is a continuous improvement. And, um, you know, we're, we're working towards getting there. Um, again, we treat everybody coming in as equal uh, and where they go from there is, is based on their capabilities and, and their work and how they can accomplish their, their objectives. Uh, we encourage difference of opinions. Uh, we embrace it. We uh, advocate for those who don't particularly have a strong voice. You know, beginning, we try to give everybody a voice. Um, and work towards that diverse uh, and inclusive workforce. It is extremely important to our organization. Um, and, and we work very hard to just not maintain it, but proactively improve it. Mm. Sounds incredibly positive. Absolutely. It is, it is one of the biggest joys uh, of my career, being able to be a part of that uh, initiative. Amazing. So Mona, I noticed uh, outside of outside of working life, outside of the corporate world, you've been involved in uh, helping others through numerous areas of uh, volunteering work at local hospitals with the scouts. Um, why is this so important um, for you? To me, it's a it's a very personal uh, initiative, if you will. Um, talking about the scouts, you know, we discussed education, early education early on. Um, at least the program that we are involved with uh, is, is very positive in building characters in, uh, in young scouts um, and, you know, being a part of that and being able to see them grow um, is extremely, to me, is, is important, is very much enjoyable. And, and you always find times for things that matter to you, right? Um, and then, you know, I... I volunteer at a children's hospital. Uh, again, it's it's a younger group. Um, and what I really do relates to those who unfortunately have parents that uh, don't have the resources to be there. And I don't do anything more than just, just be there for them. Um, I'm not qualified in, with any medical training. So it's just being there for those who don't have others around them. Um, I think the satisfaction that you get out of that um, there is there is no um, limit on the value you can put put on it, uh, and then you know we do also have involvements through our company. Uh, you know we work with the food banks, um, again reaching out, giving back to the community. Um, one of the things that that again we take great pride in in our organization is um, 
just just giving back and be good stewards uh, of our community and and a big part of it. Um, so that that drives that as well. Perfect. Wow. Mona, we we always like to end on uh, impact. Um, and what is the long-term impact you'd like to have on the industry and more at a personal level as well when looking back? You know, from, from an industry standpoint, I think uh, LNG industry is very strong, very old. Um, we, we are very proud in our safety records compared to the other uh, energy industries, if, if you will, dealing, dealing with other fossil fuels, right? It's, it's a very clean fuel, um, and I do truly believe that it's here to stay for the long term. And through innovations, uh, through continuing with our support in, in permitting and, and even further uh, reducing the environmental footprint of these projects, uh, I do think that we are all working towards uh, a cleaner future as an industry. And uh, I, would, I would very much like to continue being a part of that. Uh, on, a, on a personal level, um, I wouldn't be here if it was not for my great mentors along the way. Um, I was right out of school. Uh, my background was actually high temperature reactor design, had nothing to do with cryogenics. But there was that, that one person who decided that, you know what, I'll take the chance. I'll, I'll let her in and see what she can do. Um, so if I can do that for others around me, as we have our younger generations entering the, the workforce, to me, that is a, that is a personal goal. Uh, let, let help others grow um, and, you know, make sure that that is, that is our future, right? They are the ones who are going to drive the industry. They're the ones who are going to drive the country and how we succeed or fail, uh, you know, as a nation, as a planet. If I can be a part of uh, making that group even slightly more so successful um, and hopefully can help them not make the same uh, mistakes I have done earlier in my career. Um, to me, that would be, that would be a great accomplishment. Wow. Nice note to end on. I was going to say very inspirational and very helpful advice as well. Thank you so much. Mona, absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for your insights and your openness and hopefully speak to you very, very soon. Very much appreciate the time uh, that, that you have taken and, and the opportunity to have this conversation. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mona. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Women in LNG. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Women in LNG, in association with Powerplay, presented by ExxonMobil. Mm -hmm.